We're a little bit more than a week removed from Nintendo's E3 presentation, and if Nintendo's stock is any indication, it wasn't the most well-received E3 of all time. Between the lack of announcements, the focus on Smash Bros, between the digital presentation, and the treehouse, fans were disappointed, and I was as well. Is there a way Nintendo could have made this presentation better, though? Well, I'm your host, 24Kevin, here for 24Kevin Tendo, and I'm here to tell you how Nintendo could have made a better E3 conference. First thing I noticed when I was watching the presentation is there was no grand theme or any sort of fun aspect to go with this year. In previous years, they had Robot Chicken, the Jim Henson Company with the puppets, if you guys remember that, do something in their presentation, and it added something special to it. This year, there was kind of just nothing, just sort of the executives appeared, and that was it. There was no rhyme or reason to it, the pacing sort of seemed off. What if they got someone like Justin Roiland to come in and do some animations for the presentation instead? Sure, it might be a little raunchy, but it would be a really good thing, and I'm sure he'd be more than happy to do it. I mean, you guys saw on Rick and Morty when Rick wanted to sell the 3DSs and asked Nintendo for free stuff. I'm sure they'd give him a lot of free stuff for doing this. Any way you look at it, it would be a huge hit to the adult fan base who knows what it is, and if it kept it appropriate, it would be great for the younger audience as well. Let's just hope it'd be good for all ages to enjoy. Come with me. We can be rich and we also all get to keep one and we can play Nintendo games. Nintendo, give me free stuff. One thing that really irked people about E3 is that there weren't a lot of surprises. Granted, a lot of things were leaked in the upcoming weeks, but those games didn't really make you want to go out and buy a Switch right away. If anything, it made you go, oh, well, that's okay. I can wait to buy it until Smash comes out then. I mean, what they showed looked pretty awesome. But between the leaks and all the previous announcements, it kind of skewed my view on everything that happened during the presentation. There were also some games that people were expecting to get news on, like Metroid Prime 4 and the Yoshi Switch title. I personally thought we'd at least get a trailer for Metroid Prime 4, but no, it was completely absent from the presentation altogether. Later on in the week, Bill Trennan spoke on this and said, It's still in development, but yeah, we're not featuring it at E3 this year. I think the main thing is, as people have probably realized by now, we show things when we think we're ready to show them. And when we think we're ready to show Metroid Prime, we'll show Metroid Prime. I understand wanting to get people hyped for the Nintendo Switch by telling them this title's in development, and it was sort of rumored already that a Nintendo Switch title was already in development, but if you had to save the Metroid Prime 4 announcement for the end of your E3 presentation this year, that could have been your big WOW moment saying it's now in development, and then you wouldn't have people expecting it to see this year. They also had the remake of Metroid Samus Returns 2 at the Treehouse announced last year, and they could have easily announced that during E3 in place of Metroid Prime 4, and people would have gone berserk for it because at that point the 3DS was still a hot commodity, and this game was very well received. It would have tied over Metroid fans until this year, and the Metroid Prime 4 now in development would have been a huge ender to the presentation. Another game conspicuous by its absence was Yoshi's Switch title. It was shown off at last year's E3, nothing has been said since, but they did show it off during last year's Treehouse, so I was fully expecting to get a release date for that title during this E3. We weren't so lucky. Afterwards, in the same interview, Bill Trennan spoke to IGN and said, It's actually been making really good progress. They decided they wanted to make some improvements, so they're going to just take a little bit more time on it, and that's why we're not showing it at this year's show. Trinan told IGN, but I think you can look forward to some updates on it in later 2018. So it was ready to show last year, but not this year. I don't get it. Look, if you really wanted to make a surprise announcement, you should have saved it from last year. No one knew it was in development, and I'm sure there might have been some rumors at this point, though Nintendo was very good at keeping Mario games under wraps. I'm sure it would have made a great announcement this year, and if the eShop is any indication, it has been delayed till 2019, and I believe it was confirmed in an interview later to be coming in 2019 as well. So if they saved this Yoshi title for this year, they actually could have showed the levels they demoed last year during this year's Treehouse, and that could have taken up some of the time as opposed to repetitive Smash matches over and over again. Don't get me wrong, we'll get to that in a minute. Now the team must have thought they were going to make their 2018 release date, which is why they showed it off last year, and since it's been delayed, I'm assuming something went completely wrong in the development process, or they changed something completely to add it into the game. Either way, I don't mind waiting, as long as the game is great when it's done. I personally love the Yoshi games, they're a little easy, but I love the exploration of it, trying to get 100%. That's where the true challenge is. The point I'm trying to make about these two games is if you saved them for this year, you wouldn't have had all this backlash of people waiting for it. Either that, or you should have at least told people this year that they're not going to appear at E3 beforehand. This way people wouldn't have gone in with their expectations so lofty, and maybe they would have appreciated the presentation a little bit more. Again, there was the issue of no big surprises, as a bunch of games were leaked early thanks to this document that Nintendo had commissioned in order to get their booths ready. The games that were listed included Fortnite, Paladins, Overcooked 2, 
Killer Queen Black, and Dragon Ball Fighter Z. They were all leaked early, and don't get me wrong, they were rumored for some time, while well, some of them were not Overcooked 2 or Qu Killer Queen Black. And with Ridley and some of the other returners being spoiled earlier this year, there weren't a lot in the way of surprises this year's presentation. The only real things you could consider surprises were uh, Damon X Machina, Mario Party, which was one of my predictions earlier in the year, and I'm super excited they went back to the classic format, don't get me wrong, that was probably one of my highlights of the conference. The surprise day and day after releases of the Octo Expansion, Fortnite, and Hollow Knight, and of course Fire Emblem being delayed till 2019. Again, Nintendo does like to spread out their announcements through their Nintendo Directs throughout the year, but E3 is the one that's supposed to be the big one. It's not supposed to feel like a Direct that was just thrown together at the last minute. I mean, some of Nintendo's Directs have been bigger this year, and that's going to bring me to my next point. Personally, I would have changed some of the game announcements from the March Nintendo Direct. You could have easily moved at least three of the titles to the Nintendo Switch E3 Direct, and people would have gone berserk for them. Of course, the three titles I'm referring to is the Travis Touchdown title that they showed off a highlight video of. Now granted, some of these levels have been demoed before, but there were new details about the game revealed as well, and this would have been a better place to do it in my opinion. You could also have added in the announcement of Undertale, it would have blown people's minds as well and would have filled out that indie niche that the Switch has been doing so well so far. And Okami HD, which Nintendo fans have been begging for since its initial announcement. I'm pretty happy it was coming, and an E3 announcement would have been absolutely astounding, especially since they could have put together a really cool announcement trailer. I mean, taking out those three games, you still would have had a really solid March Direct. You would have had all the 3DS titles, you would have had the Crash Trilogy, uh, you would have had the Fractured Butthole, you also would have had Smash, which basically overshadowed everything and made you forget what was announced anyways. Saving these games for E3 would have made them feel like an even bigger deal, and I think with a little bit of more foresight, they could have filled it out a little bit more. As I mentioned earlier, if they were going to save those, they might as well have saved the Yoshi game to put there. And in a perfect world, they could have saved the Metroid Prime 4 announcement for the end of E3, just saying it's now in development with that little teaser. I understand why they put it in the middle of the last E3 as opposed to at the end as a huge surprise or anything, considering they didn't have anything to show, but maybe they could have had enough footage to do a little bit of a trailer here as well. So with all those games added, plus the entertainment or animated segments, you would have about 10 to 15 minutes of extra time added to the original presentation. With that, you'd be able to cut out a lot of the portions of the Smash details of the presentation that people weren't too fond of. Speaking of, I know Nintendo said that Smash was going to be the main focus of E3, but there was too much Smash in that direct presentation. All the little patch notes could have been saved for a later time. Now, I know Nintendo wanted to end on a bang, and that's why they announced Ridley at the end of the conference, but I would have done it a little bit differently. Now, the way I would have announced it is you could have had Sakurai introducing the game, and then have all the characters fall on the screen showing the entire roster. People would have gone berserk for it. It would have been an absolute awesome announcement, just having showing all the characters that are going to be in the game. You would have people overanalyzing everything that happened in that trailer. Looking at you, Game Explain. You'd be able to discern the details from that, and social media would be a buzz all day. Heck, you can even have certain characters and only certain items and certain stages available in the treehouse all day, and people would be able to pick out new details and change to the characters that would be shared over social media throughout the Treehouse E3 presentation. This would have kept them in social media conversations for even longer, and people might have viewed this presentation as a little bit better. But you could teach what Echo Fighters are, and then inform everyone that the Echo Fighter Daisy was coming. It'd be a nice new fighter, people would be like, oh, I wanted a little bit more, but still, announcing a new fighter is a pretty big deal. Then you could always have Sakurai say, oh, you know, I hope you don't expect too much, it's been a lot in development and please pay attention later for the Smash Invitational and Treehouse for more details about the Smash Bros game. Now we get to the Super Smash Bros Invitational. This is when you would show all the patch notes, this is when all the main Smash fans are watching and people are really trying to learn the game. People who don't quite know what it is and are about to watch this game for the first time, something like this would be really informative for them. You could show them the uppercut with Mario, show them the cappy head, uh, the different costumes. Basically, they should present it similar to how the 50 Facts video was presented when the Smash Bros. Wii U was originally released, and they announced Mewtwo at the end of that. That was very, very well received. As they did all those facts, went through all the characters, at the end they could announce that the GameCube controller is going to be compatible with the Nintendo Switch. People would be going, whoa, crowd going insane, and then say that people in the competition are going to be using that controller tonight makes sense to announce it there. At the end of the competition, everyone's won and everything, Sakurai comes out, and then instead of just saying goodbye and leaving, he could show the announcement for Ridley. I think if he was to show Ridley here, the reaction to people in the crowd, despite it being leaked early, could rival that of the announcement of Super Smash Bros. Melee of people going crazy in the crowd for that. Think about it, you have the perfect opportunity, you have the world's biggest Smash fans there, 
trying to watch Smash Bros. People have been begging for Ridley to get in, and always being told he's too big. This would have been an absolutely incredible moment for all of E3. I mean, after the Splatoon Invitational and the Octo Expansion being announced for the day after released, and Sakurai just coming out to say, hey, going back to work on the game, see you guys later. Complete respect to man for having respect for his craft. He is an awesome artist, and I respect his work ethic. But if he did come out with the announcement and said Ridley at the end, he wouldn't have seen like Splatoon 2 overdid them in that presentation sense. It would have been a nice way to end the whole day and wrap everything up and keep that social media flowing into next day so people could tune into the treehouse expecting to see Ridley and see how he works on that day. Number one, get an overarching theme. I'm looking at you, Justin Roiland. I really hope you do something for them next year. Take some of the games that were announced last year at E3 and move them to this year, especially since they're delayed to 2019. The announcement for Yoshi and Metroid Prime 4 would make for very nice surprises this year. Number three, move a couple of games from the March Direct to E3. It's a couple more surprises and a couple more unannounced titles that players have always wanted to play on a Nintendo console, so I'm sure they would enjoy these announcements. Number 4. Shorten the E3 presentation to about 30 to 35 minutes. Cut out all the patch notes for Smash Bros, finish on the Metroid Prime 4 logo, have the Daisy Echo Fighter be the last thing that people see for Smash Bros, unless you want to put the release date there, which would be a really cool thing to do as well at the end of the presentation. And number 5. Show off the patch notes before the Smash Invitational, and announce Ridley after the Invitational. I think if Nintendo had a little bit more foresight and did something a little bit more like this, the presentation would have been much more well received. But what do I know, I'm just a Nintendo fan who's been watching E3s for as long as I can walk. <laughs> and that's all the time we got for today's episode. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this E3. Would you have enjoyed this one or would you have enjoyed Nintendo's? Don't forget to subscribe and share this on Twitter for extra entries for the SNES Classic and the Oli Oli for 3DS giveaway. We're giving out the Oli Oli for 3DS this weekend, so keep your eyes open for that. For everyone here at 24 Kevin Tendo, I'm your host, 24 Kevin. See you guys next time. Hope you had a great day. Bye!